Man, I look ratchet. It's fine. Hello, welcome back to the Yellow Dresser. Today, I will be doing something a little bit different for my sewing videos. I'm super excited. This is kind of a test run because I have some um, ideas for later on, a few months from now, um, for a fun series that I want to do. But right now, I am doing a video on my Miami dress. That is what I've been calling it. It's my Miami inspired dress. If you follow me on Instagram, you've seen me posting about it. It only took me three days to finish this dress. So yes, I've, that, that's just miraculous for me to finish a dress in three days. So with that said, this video is laid out a little differently. So and because of that and because my sewing videos are rather long, I know I just posted one on how to make my corset dress, which was almost 40 minutes long, which is so long, guys. But if you've watched the whole thing, thank you so much. I would like to say that. Thank you for watching this video. Make sure to hit that like button, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss another video. And we can get to the point that I was kind of got off track from making. Because of this video length and because I set it up differently, I have timestamps down in the description below, so check those out if you want to skip ahead or skip back or skip to and fro in if you're following along with this video and making a dress alongside me. It's just it makes it easier because you might want to go back, rewatch or maybe you're doing it I don't know in a different order whatever works for you and we're gonna get into the first half of this video which is my inspiration for my Miami dress so I really wanted to go over this because I don't know I think a lot of times you don't see fashion designers really talk about their inspiration like I know they do like obviously they do especially for collections and top designers they always talk about their inspiration but they don't talk necessarily about how they became inspired and how it like grew into what it was. So I kind of wanted to go over and share with you how my dress evolved into what it is, um, well, what it is now, which I did finish it. So when I first came up with this dress, it was actually with my grandma. Um, and I was visiting her and we were in this little fabric store in the middle of nowhere in North Dakota. And there was this beautiful pink watercolor like splash fabric, which here's a scrap of it. Isn't this just gorgeous? I saw this and I was like, it just speaks Miami to me. The watercolor, the bright, vibrant color. It just, and I was getting ready to move here and I was like, I need this fabric. And guys, I'm so happy. So honestly, this fabric is what really inspired and this dress to begin with. And I just, I love this fabric. It's just so pretty. The color is just, it's just gorgeous. It's like pastel and there's like different tones of pink in here. And I just love it. I'm not a big pink fan. Like I can't do hot pink or like bright blinding pink. I just, I don't, I just don't, not my thing might be your thing and if it is fantastic but it's not my thing i like more pastel tones and this just was so beautiful and i love the watercolor detail on it i just thought it was a real representation of miami it's on the beach it's known for its beaches it's known for its art deco which i really thought this color represented that really well because if you've ever been to South Beach you would know the art deco there is strong and I absolutely love the buildings there. They're so bright and colorful and different. They're just, they're clean. They look, and I don't mean clean like they're physically clean, like I'm sure they're physically clean, but I mean like clean, you know? Like there's no like sharp edges, there's no rustic look to it they're rounded they're beautiful if you haven't seen these buildings like google miami art deco it's just beautiful architecture that i just love art deco honestly it's just so pretty and i love it so that is what really inspired this dress to begin with and i actually one second i actually drew the dress out at my grandma's 
um, house while I was still visiting. And it was like my rough draft sort of dress. It ended up being my rough draft. At first I was like, this isn't my rough draft. Like this is what I want the dress to look like. If you follow me on Instagram, I did post the picture of this. This is my original sketch for this dress. It's just girly and pink and summery, which honestly, I don't understand how you could not do a summer aesthetic when you're inspired by Miami because it's just summer all year round here. It's hot, we're on the beach, we've got the art deco, we have the art inspiration, they have an entire art district. So summer just, it really spoke to me. So I just wanted to do a very breezy dress, really. But as I was um, doing this dress, I, I don't know, I, I was in the middle of actually doing the dress, like I was filming it, and I was like, I could do this so much more justice than what I was originally gonna do. So I, I sat there and I pondered for quite a while. I was like, this dress just needs something more. You, you know, you've ever sat down and you've looked at an assignment or you've looked at an art project or a sewing project or whatever it is and you're just like, mm -mm. no, this is the rough draft. This cannot be the final. I can do better. That is what went through my head. I was like, no, this is not what I want the dress to look like. This just, it's not. So as I was really looking through my racking my brain, honestly, I was like, I have plenty of fabric here. I don't need to do a full circle skirt. That was my original plan. I wanted to do a full circle skirt. And I was like, I could do more with this fabric than doing a full circle skirt. So therein came the birth of the second skirt which the first image to come to mind when i think of a tiered skirt let me um let me pull it up i've gotten in the habit of like screenshotting dresses and i'm just like yes inspiration so now i have a camera roll full of random dresses that i'm wanting to use for um inspiration getting um, ah found it so this is the dress that i don't the top eh, but i love the tiered skirt in this dress and I just, it's just tiered and it's lacy. It's so girly and feminine and I just love it. And that was the first thing to pop in my mind when I was like, I wanna do a tiered layered skirt. But then I was like, that doesn't scream art deco to me. Like the tiers, the, the different ruffly, delicate, girly tiers doesn't scream art deco to me. It's just not, clean and minimalistic enough if if you know what i mean so i was like well i could do an overskirt that's um asymmetrical in the front and i really i st stuck with that but then as i was starting to formulate and piece this in my head i was like it just needs something more it really it did it needs something more to me so i finally I don't know what happened, honestly. Have you ever just been in the creative zone and you're just like, yes, I don't know where this idea came from, but this is the idea I'm going with? That's what happened. I was like, ruffles. I don't know why I just thought the ruffles would, is the perfect thing. And I actually, honestly, I was like, no, I'm not gonna do ruffles. And then I ended up doing ruffles. <laughs> but I I have the, uh, the other, the, uh, the, the, the sketch, I haven't colored it at this point yet, I'm sorry guys, but I sketched it out again. So this is the final sketch. This is actually a very, like this is what the dress looks like. But I thought the ruffles and the tearing and the more flat skirt really depicted the art deco inspiration I was feeling for Miami a lot more because like I mentioned before, art deco, it's not loud. It's not, there's not a lot to it. It's clean. There's no rough edges, rough jaggeds. It's all just beautiful architecture and you look at it and you're like, wow, that's, it's just, I love it. So I just really wanted to capture the beautiful, summery, 
aesthetic that the beach here in Miami really um, holds because South Beach, let me tell you, it's a whole nother world. It really does feel like that. It's just everyone here is so nice. Everyone here is so relaxed. Like I've never seen so many active wear in my life. Like the women here, all they wear is like leggings and sports bras, not even lying summery it's so summery here and i wanted this dress to reflect that as much as i could which is why i really fell in love with the print because again the watercolor splashes on it and the beautiful vibrant pastel pink just really screamed miami art deco beach summer everything to me and i wanted this dress to reflect that i want it to be a summery breezy dress that was just clean and had no rough edges no sharp lines to it it was just a summery aesthetic feel and i really feel like i captured that let me know in the comments what you guys think about it because everyone because everyone interprets things differently so and that's so true everyone if you're in fashion or anything else what you see in something is not necessarily what the designer or anybody else sees. It is just an interpretation and I want to know what you guys interpret of my dress. You can skip to the end if you want to see the dress and to let me know what you guys think. If you think that I did capture Miami and the beach and the Art Deco feel in it. So that is the inspiration that I got for this dress. It really was it is my Miami dress, my Miami inspired dress, and I love it. I think I will take it out wearing my roller skates because I feel like my roller skates would match it very well because they're pink and floral-y. So I think maybe I'll do a fun video of me roller skating around in it, maybe on South Beach. But um, yeah, so without further ado, here comes the second portion of this video. Now I will show you how I made the dress. And again, if, you, um, if you're following along in making a dress from the, uh, inspired by my dress that I'm making in this video, please tag me in it. I want to see it. I want to see how you guys interpreted my design and how you guys were influenced to create your own dress. So thank you again for watching the first portion. Here comes the sewing portion of this video. All right, welcome to the by hand lend and cut scene. I have mentioned them in previous videos before. I really, really do recommend you use their circle skirt calculator. It just saves you a whole lot of time, a whole lot of math. And if you are like me doing math, I mean, you're fine with doing the math. You just, you prefer not to. So what they give you is that you put in, you go to byhandlendon.com. You click on the circle skirt calculator. You put in all the information that they have you. You click calculate and they give you your waist radius. So since this is half a circle skirt, it's going to be bigger than if it was a full circle skirt, of course. So this is my waist radius for a half circle skirt. It is seven and a half. My waist is between 25 to 26 inches. So if you are the same waist as me, this is your radius, seven and a half. So, hi Scotty. You got a photo bomb? You saying hi to the camera? Say hi to the camera. So, this is your radius. Let's get to cutting out the skirts. All right, so we're gonna take our radius and we are just going to line it up right on the edge of our salvage. You wanna make sure that you line this up on the fold because this is half a circle skirt so unless you are sewing two separate panels together you want this on the fold so you have to just make one clean line in the back or the side of your skirt whatever your design choice is so I would suggest pattern weights um, but if you don't have pattern weights just pin them down hold it down whatever makes you happy and we're going to start, no, no tinky, no tinky. Let's start measuring out the rest of this dress. Where did my ruler and my thing go? So I calculated 18, I believe. We're gonna go down here, and this ruler is exactly 18, which makes things a little easier for me. And you're just gonna measure out from your radius. 
Make sure you don't bump it if it's not pinned down. I would suggest doing as many lines as you possibly can when you're doing something like this. It just makes things a little more accurate, it makes things easier for when you're going to cut it out. Alright, once you have all your little tick marks, go ahead and take your pins and pin it down so it doesn't move around while you're cutting it. Or if again, if you have pattern weights, you can use those as well. I'm going to chalk out my radius right here so I can remove this. All right. So I would actually recommend keeping these so every single time you want to make a circle skirt, you don't have to recut them out. I would put the radius, on, I would write down the radius on here, what kind of circle skirt it's for, whether it's a full or a half or a quarter. And then I would write down maybe the seam allowance. By Hen London automatically does 5 8 seam allowance, which is the Endert's industry standard for seam allowance. So if you want to go ahead and mark that down and any other information you would want to put on this, it's just, then you don't have to go ahead and keep cutting things out when you need this. So I would, I would recommend just keeping it in a folder in your sewing studio. All right, so once you have it all pinned down, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna pin down right by the waist radius so it doesn't move around as well. All right, once all of it is pinned down, you can go ahead and finish your line. You should have enough tick marks here that you can easily just whoo, draw your line. Once you have that drawn out, let's go ahead and cut it out. So there we have the under skirt. So now we are going to cut out the over skirt. All right, so this is the complicated one, guys. Let me see if I can zoom in. There we go. So what I have decided to do is I'm trying to use as much of this fabric as I can. So I have angled my waist radius right here so it follows the line that I cut out on my circle skirt. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my nifty little uh, patterning chalk. I'm going to draw out which where this is going. And we're going to finish this line with my ruler. And this is really just so I know where this is going because again we're going to end up cutting all this right here. So then we're going to pattern this part out. And then we're going to move this down. See what I did? Alright, so what I did is I rotated this so it lined up right here along my line that I already had because we are going to finish this and make a waist radius that's a little bigger so I can gather it and so it will look a little more full over the top of the other skirt. And we are actually going, it's going to be longer in the back so we are going to finish this line going straight up this way and then we are going to take it from the bottom here and we are going to curve it all the way out. We want it to be able to be a full circle around. And if I did 18 because of the way it, it's cut and how much fabric I have here, I can't do 18 because you'll notice, you know, let me pull it into the view, you'll notice that my ruler goes off of my fabric. This ruler is exactly 18 inches, so I know that I cannot do 18 inches all the way around, starting at 18 inches and then um, shortening it because this ruler goes off my fabric. So we're going to shorten it an inch. And my ruler is still off of my fabric, so we're going to shorten it another half inch. And bada boom, bada bing, we have a winner. So we are going to shorten it an inch and a half. So let's measure that over here. And we're just going to make the tick mark go out over here. Make the mark 
and we're going to continue doing that and as all the way till we hit the other side where we can't do that anymore all right so as you can tell i have hit the spot where i can no longer do 17 or what are we at 16 and a half inches so we're going to start from the other direction now so we have eight and a half inches uh yeah eight and a half inches so we are going to start from there let's see where is the eight and a half inches there we go all right make the line and then we're going to make another line right here and this is where you would want to start connecting lines so i know it looks a little goofy right now because of how it looks so we are going to measure the deficit of fabric so nine inches so half of nine is four and a half so we're just going to make a little tick mark and measure from the tick mark so we got 12 and a little less than a half right there and we're just going to measure in between these from now on And if you're not sure how you're, if you're doing this on a project and you're not sure how it's going to turn out, I would suggest buying muslin. Muslin is super cheap. It is a draping fabric. It is meant for testing out patterns. I will link it in the description below for you so you have an easy access to it. It is a nice fabric to work with if you want to try something out before you use it on your real fabric. Or if you do not want to buy that extra fabric, that is okay too. I would suggest cutting it out bigger than what you want because you can always make it smaller, but you can never make it bigger unless, well, you could make it bigger, but that, that's a whole, that's a lot more work and that I'm sure you don't want to do. So I would always suggest cutting it out bigger and then draping it over your mannequin to see what it looks like or draping it over yourself if you do not have a dress form and then you can go from there. All right, so I'm gonna take my chalk and I want this a little more rounded. So we're going to round it off like this. So we're going to cut this part out first. Oops, oh no. Oh, this is so sad. I stepped on my chalk and it broke. Oh, that's really sad. All right, so I wanted to get a little up close so you could see it real well. So these are my fabrics, and once I get all my pattern out, I will drape it on my mannequin so you guys can see what it will look like before I sew it together for you all. So this is the over fabric. This is the front of it right here, and this is the back. So it's going to be longer in the back. It's like a, a pendulum kind of over a drape. And this is the circle skirt. So this is where the radius is, as you can see. And then I cut it right at my hem length. And of course, you want to remember to add seam allowance. Like I said before, the By Hand London website adds 5 eighths of seam allowance to your radius. So you already have a seam allowance for your cutting it right there. But it will, you will need to add seam allowance for your hem. Alright, so I'm going to show you how to, I am going to drape this bodice. So here we go. So if you remember the picture, it is gathered up here and then there is a point that goes down here. The waistband is actually not going to be very big. It's going to be little. I'm not a big fan of chunky waistbands, just not my thing. Um, so I have my muslin right here. Like I mentioned before, I will link a, just, uh, I will put a link in the description for you guys if you want some draping muslin or if you just want some muslin to test out patterns 
even if you're not creating a pattern or if it's your first time doing a pattern, testing it out is always a great option. So that is in the description for you. I ran out of draping tape, which makes me so sad, guys. Um, so we are going to be doing this without draping tape, which honestly, guys, I really suggest getting draping tape. I love it. Wall walk has some draping tape. I don't think it's called draping tape on wall walk, but it's like very thin tape that you use to drape on a mannequin. Now, if you don't have a dress form, obviously you don't need to get it. You would just be kind of holding it up to yourself and like marking where it would be on you, which you wouldn't need draping tape for that. So let's get started. So my number one rule of creating a pattern is you only have to create half of the pattern because it's going to be identical on the other side so you only need to create half of it and you'll see that in all of my draping videos whether you watch them on instagram or pinterest which i'll put them right below so you can go follow me um i only ever do half of the pattern so we're just going to pin this right here i'm going to grab my little pin cushion which i actually need to get a new one this one's kind of falling apart See, it's really wobbly. Okay, so we're just gonna pin it right here. And we're gonna make sure it lays flat. We're gonna... Okay, now we're gonna do it over here. Pinch this in for now. All right, so now we're gonna get my chalk and we are going to outline where we want the uh, bodice to be. So it is like a square type shape. So I'm gonna make sure that this is the middle of my bodice right here. So we're gonna go ahead and mark that. That is the middle of my bust. So we're gonna go off to the side a little bit. And we're gonna go up till about right there because this is where I wanna put the straps. And then we're going to go down and I don't like to show any and I any so I'm going to make sure that it's all covered and all uh, not seeable and then we're just going to draw a line right here across All right, so once you have that done, so the straps on this dress are gonna be thin and then it's gonna tie in the back. So I want this to be nice and pointy and nice and you can see it and it has to be angled that way because you're gonna be tying it around your back. If you angled it this way, it's gonna pull everything that way and you're gonna have a gap here and you don't want the gap unless that's what you're going for, but we don't want a gap. So, the next part, I'm just gonna mark where I put this pin in right here. And we are ready to do the waistband. So, like I said, the waistband's not super thick, so I'm gonna find my natural waist. And your natural waist, guys, is not down by your hip. Your natural waist is right where your rib cage ends. That is your natural waist. Um, um, surprisingly enough, not a lot of people know that. So, we're going to put this right along where your waist is, my natural waist. And we're gonna lay it flat, go all the way around to the back. And I will show you what the back looks like in a second. All right, so as you can see, this fabric, oh, maybe you can't see it, I'll angle it down for a minute. So as you can see, it's like pulling, and that's because this fabric, it's not gonna conform to your body because it is a 2D shape right now. So we are going to remedy that in a second. But we wanted it pinned so we could do the front half of this uh, pattern. My waistband, I think I don't want it any more than two inches around. So I'm going to grab my ruler and I'm going to go ahead and mark where I want the two inches to be. Alright, so 
So this is as big as my waistband is going to be. And it does point. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start the point right now. Right here. So I'm going to make sure this is laying perfectly flat. And then we are going to find the middle. And we're going to draw a line down. And then we're going to draw a line across. Alright, so this is the start of the pattern. So you can see this is where my angle is. And so we are going to start going to the back. So we're just going to slowly take it around. And make sure this is still two inches, still two inches. And then we're just going to draw a straight line right there. All right. So now what we're going to do, we're going to cut it. So now that I cut it, I can lay it flat again. And then I can rotate it around and finish it off. Now my dress form is just a smidge bigger than I am, so I never go all the way completely around. So I'm going to stop it actually right there so I can measure it and make sure that it matches my waist before I close it off. So we're going to close, take this off and I will show you how to finish up the pattern draft. All right, so we have our shapes here. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with this one right here. And where did I put my ruler? I'm just going to draw the line so that it's straight. Now, I do actually suggest doing this with another color chalk if you've never done something like this before so you don't get your lines mixed up. And then we are going to clean it up. Just like that. Measure. So my waist is 26. So half of 26 is 13. So we are going to measure 13 and then I'm going to add an inch for seam allowance. Finish that line. Then this ruler is actually two inches wide, which is perfect because that's how big I wanted it. And we're just going to finish it like that. Once you have this out, you are going to want to cut this, oops, wrong scissors, and drape it on your dress form and make sure that there's nothing wrong with it. So if it's pinching weird or the fabric's moving in the direction you don't want it to, you're going to want to have alter it at this point. So I'm going to drape this real quick and we're going to check it out. Alright, so this is perfect. So we're going to finish this one right here. So we're gonna make sure that all these lines I drew are nice and dark. All right, so right here is where I had to put a dart in. So when I actually do this, I won't be darting it, I will be gathering it, but I do not know how much I want it gathered at this point. So what we're going to do, we're gonna take our ruler, and we're going to angle it in at that gap, and we're gonna draw a line. Once this is done, you can cut it out. Once it's cut out, you're going to stitch right in between your gap here and gather it so you can tell how much more you need it gathered or how much little you want it gathered. All right, so I actually end up wanting it more, uh, more gathered than this, so I'm going to show you how to do that. So what you're gonna do, you're going to take your little nifty scissors right here you're going to go between, right in the middle of your, uh, where your gap was for your uh, dart, and you're gonna go right to the top of your point. 
and you're gonna draw a line with your chalk or your marker. And you're gonna take your scissors and you're gonna cut it open, but do not cut it apart. So when it, once it is cut enough apart, you can open it up and make it bigger so you can add more uh, gathers to it. Once you have everything to your liking, you're going to, I would suggest transferring this to paper. So you can buy giant craft paper like I have right here, or you can just take, if you have paper big enough like this craft paper, you can transfer it onto that because leaving patterns on fabric like this is not reliable. The fabric is going to alter its shape and it's going to uh, just distort over time. So if you really wanna preserve and keep your patterns, you should transfer it to paper as soon as possible. All right, so I went ahead and I drew out my pattern. So this is what it looks like. I always detail my pattern, so I put which way the grain line on the fabric will go. I put the pattern number, how many I need to cut up, if I need to cut two or one, if I need to cut lining, what, where I wanna put the straps or anything, if I'm connecting it to where it needs to be gathered. All that needs to be on your patterns because you're, the more you, patterns you make, you're not gonna be able to remember every single details about every single pattern. So if you do make a pattern, please be sure to mark all the necessary um, information. So this is the uh, top and this is my belt. So I did the same on here. This will actually be cut on the bias. If you do not know what the bias is, a bias is a 45 degree angle from your salvage on your fabric. That will always be the most stretchy part of your fabric. It does not matter what kind of fabric it is, the 45 degree angle from your salvage will always be the stretchiest part of your fabric. So, now that we have all of this um, pattern out, I am going to cut it out and then I will show you what it looks like draped on my mannequin. All right, so I'm gonna show you how to cut this out first. This, again, is going to be cut on the bias. So what we need to do, we need to open up our fabric this is the salvage, so to find your 45 degree angle, all you're going to do is fold it. And make sure that the fold is 90 degree angles, is at a 90 degree angle from your fabric, and that is where you get your 45 degree angle. Alright, so this is the 45 degree angle of your salvage, so you're just going to take your bias right here, then once you get it pinned, we can cut it. So the next thing we're going to do is I will actually be cutting out another one of these. So to do that, it's going to be a little differently because of the flap right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to unpin this. We're going to set this aside for now. And we're going to fold down the triangle part right here. So it creates one nice flat line. All right, so now we can continue. So we're just gonna do the same thing that we already did, except that we folded down the point on the belt. And I will show you why in a moment, once we start sewing this together. And I'm cutting this out on the bias just because I want it to be able to nicely form around my waist. I don't want it to get too bunchy or weird. I did test it out on my mannequin, so it shouldn't do that. But it's always uh, better to be cautious when it's sewing. So that is what we're gonna be doing. So this is the outer fabric. This is the lining. And we're gonna cut the last portion of the lining out. So we're just going to unfold the pattern. Just gonna line it up right on the edge here. All right, so we do need to add seam allowance to this portion. So we're just going to get my handy dandy little ruler. We're gonna extend it by an inch so it matches the rest of the seam allowance on this garment. And 
then we're just gonna cut it straight. So there we have it. We have our pieces for the belt. All right, so here is the pattern. We want the grain line going this way, so I'm gonna angle it so this line matches the direction of my fabric. We're gonna move it over a little bit because we wanna use as le the least amount of fabric as possible. Can you get necessary? You get necessary muffin. All right, and then we're gonna go ahead and just cut it out. Once that's cut out, so we're just going to get rid of this extra fabric right here. We can cut out the lining. All right, so now we have all of our pieces except for our straps cut out. All right, so this is what it sort of looks like draped out. Again, it's bigger because the seam allowance, I probably will end up extending my ruching down here a little bit. The lining will be done a little differently on the cups, which we will go over in a second. Uh, and of course I haven't cut out the straps or the um, ruffles that's going along here. I will do that when we start sewing the skirt. So this is what it looks like all draped out roughly on the mannequin. I'm not sure if you can really see it, but the belt is right here. So this is the belt right here. So it's not all perfectly lined up. Again, all of this has seam allowance still on it, so it is bigger than what it will look like in the end, but this is the rough draft. So let's start piecing it together. All right, so what we're gonna do first is we are going to hem my skirts, attach the ruffles to the over skirt, and then um, base them together. So in order to do that, the hem on this circle skirt, this is the easiest, and I am telling you, this is the easiest way to do a hem on a circle skirt. So what we're going to do is you're going to either need your lining fabric or you're going to need your base fabric. For the circle skirt, we're going to be cutting some more bias tape. So I am using my muslin and I folded it at the 45 degree angle just like we did when we cut out the waistband, except instead of cutting it across we are cutting right along the edge of that fold this was the fold of the 45 degree angle that was folded like this and i cut it off so i've been lining up my ruler for as long as the bias tape that i need and i just cut along all right once you have your bias tape you're going to sew them at different angles. So you can see how these are angled the same direction. You want to be able to have a nice, clean, straight bias tape. And if you were to sew them at the same angle, you would have an angled bias tape. So how you do that, you, uh, you're going to face them opposite directions. So the points are connected like this. So it's going to look like this. See how instead of the same direction laying flat, I open it up, lay it across the top, and then you're going to stitch there to create the one perfectly seamless uh, bias tape. All right, so once you have your bias tape all sewn together, I'll show you what it looks like. So my seam, let me see if I can focus it, my seam is right here. So you can see that it's sewn at an angle. So it it's going to look like you're sewing it at a uh, 90 degree angle, but you're not. When you open it up, it'll be a nice straight hem. Once you get that done, you're going to want to press it. You can press it to the side or you can press it open. It doesn't particularly matter for this. Uh, if you are working with lighter fabric, I would suggest pressing it open, but you can do it either way. All right. Once you have it all done and all pressed and put together, you can go ahead and serge it. So if you do not have a serger, you cannot finish this uh, seam using a machine, I would suggest that you um, roll hem it. So you would take it down, fold it twice, and stitch it down because you want this edge to be finished. 
So if you don't have a serger, again, you can do that or you can use pinking shears. Pinking shears are the zigzag scissors, so you would just sew a line where you would want uh, to cut off for the peaking shears and then you would just cut. So once you have your uh, bias tape all surged and or you roll hemmed it, it is time to start assembling the first layer of the skirt. And it's a time to start assembling the first layer of the skirt. What you're going to do, you're going to put your right sides together so your fabric your outside your fabric is on the inside piece them together and you're going to want to leave some space for either a zipper or buttons or however you choose to close up your dress i'm going to leave about probably six inches so i'm going to take my ruler and a measure about six inches so about right here i'm going to mark it with a pin so i know where to stop I always do six inches for the opening of a back, whether it's a skirt, pants, whatever it is. I like to do six inches. It makes enough room to get it over your hips, especially if you're a more curvy girl. You can never go wrong with um, a bigger gap. And you're going to sew it up at your seam allowance to the pin. Now, again, if you use byhandlondon.com, this already automatically has 5 8 seam allowance built in. So you're going to want to sew up the back of your skirt using 5 8 seam allowance. So once I sewed this at 5 8 seam allowance, I went ahead and I searched it. So I searched it all the way down to where the fabrics, uh, I stopped my seam and I ran it off my serger. Then I took it, I took it and I laid it flat open like this and I run this through my serger so I have it all surged and close up. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to press this to one side. So I'm going to lay it, press it to the right side, my right side, and then we're going to press it all the way down so that this end right here is also pressed. All right, now that this is pressed, we can do the overskirt. How we are going to do the overskirt is going to be a little different than how I did the um, underskirt. So we are going to be doing a French seam for the bottom of the skirt. So I marked where I will be having it open. It's going to be the same amount uh, it was on the other skirt. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do half of my seam allowance and sew up, but I'm going to not go all the way to the top. I'm going to snip this open at the seam allowance and then I'm going to curve my seam allowance so it goes in at a point. All right, so once you have your fabric stitched together, again, you're going to be doing your wrong sides together because we are doing a French seam. So once you have that done, you're going to take your scissors you're going to take your scissors and right at the base where you ended the seam, you're going to snip it. Do not snip through your seam. Snip as close as you possibly can get to it though. Once you do that, you're going to cut away the excess seam allowance and then you're going to put it right sides together. Make sure this part that is not sewn into the French seam is not inside where it's being sewn. Press it. If you want your seams and your garments to look professional and beautiful, always, always, always press your seams. Once it is pressed, you're going to sew from the bottom and you're going to sew up to where the seam stops at your point. However, you are going to gradually bring it in so that it curves to that point. You do not want to just keep going all the way across and stop. You want to curve it in to that point. You are going to start curving it in so it makes a nice curve to this point. When you get to that point, 
Uh, you can either back stitch or you can take it out and tie it whatever you prefer. All right, and just like you did the other one, you're going to press this to one side. It does not matter which side you press it to. So when you are finished with it and you pull it to this side, you should have a nice French seam with the uh, opening still intact. So the ruffling that we'll be doing around the top skirt is done the exact same way we did the bias tape that we'll be using on the bottom skirt. So we're just going to press the seams open, then I'm going to serge both ends and I'm going to serge the bottom of the to overlaying skirt. All right, so once you get your tape uh, for your ruffles done, you're going, and you of course you serge your uh, bottom of your top layer skirt as well, you're going to roll in your uh, one side of your ruffles so you have a nice clean edge on the other side now if you wanted to you could roll this twice you don't need to because if you searched it now if you don't have a serger you will have to finish all these seams by hand either by pinking shears roll hemming it um, or you could if you have an overlock stitch on your sew uh, sewing machine you could do that as well so uh, there are different ways you could finish it, but if you searched it, you don't need to necessarily roll it twice. You can just roll it once. All right, so once you get your hem done on your ruffles, you are then, I gotta find the, uh, there it is. All right, so you're going to make the gather stitch. So typically the gather stitch is you do two lines. I always knot one in just so it doesn't fall out. Um, and then I also forgot to mention that my rule of thumb for when you're making gathers is to double the amount of fabric you would have otherwise. So I uh, measured the circumference of the uh, top skirt and then I doubled it. So I have about 200 inches of fabric right here. So what we're gonna do is we're going to do the double stitch right here. Now if you do have the twin needle, you can use the twin needle. If you do not, you have to do two lines. Now you don't have to necessarily do two lines. However, when you are stitching it and gathering it, it makes things a lot easier because you'll have a nice flat surface to work with where you can sew in between. All right, so I got my all ruffles all gathered and I finished sewing it on the end over here and connected it and then I pinned it to the over skirt. So what you're gonna wanna do when you're doing this, you're gonna wanna make sure that your ruffles are as even as possible because obviously if they're heavier over here and lighter over here, you're gonna be able to tell and you don't want your ruffles to be uneven, it's gonna look funny. I did the two gathering lines, so you're gonna stitch in between them at your seam allowance. My seam allowance is a half inch. Once you're done stitching all the way around at your seam allowance, you are going to and stitch uh, top stitch around this side to make sure you keep your gathers going up because you don't want them flipping back like this and your gathering is um, they're facing the wrong direction on your skirt. So as you can see, I'm sewing in between my stitching right here. Uh, the half inch mark on your sewing machine will be the tick mark right after 5 eighths of an inch. So you're going to just line it up right at that tick mark if your seam allowance again is at half an inch. And you're going to sew right in between where your gathering is. Alright, so I just finished attaching the ruffles. So if I put them up, they're all all done so I got a bunch of threads and of course I need to take out the stitch right here that's going to be showing but we are going to stitch it down first so you're going to take your fabric and you're just going to flip it so it's the right side and lay it down so it's going to look like this you're going to be you're going to see your ruffles and then all you're going to do you're going to make sure your seam allowance is going up so if you want to press this you can i recommend not pressing it just because they're ruffles and if you accidentally press your ruffles down they're going to look really funny and it's going to be very hard to get them back looking like normal ruffles so i would suggest maybe not 
pressing down the seam allowance because you can feel because it's thick enough you can feel what direction and what side your um, seam allowance is on so you're just going to stick that underneath the machine now what I like to do for this is I like to do an edge stitch top stitch whatever you want to call it so I just move my needle over move my needle over just like that so I have it lined up in the middle center of my foot and then I so have my needle over and I have it sewn down. It's just an easy gauge and you can't mess it up. One more thing that I do want to mention is that if you are new to sewing and you're new to doing th things like this or if even if you're not new to sewing or if you have a machine that just is troublesome when sewing thicker fabrics or thick um, things like this, I would suggest getting a walking foot and I will show you what that looks like as soon as I finish this ruffles. All right, so we have finished. So it's going to look something like this on the outside. You'll have your ruffles and of course they'll be laying like this so they're nice and ruffly. Now the other side of it should look like this. You're going to have your stitch mark down here. And of course, you're gonna be taking out this top stitch right here because you can see it on the other side. So don't forget to remove that. Um, it might take a little while, I'm not gonna lie. I probably will do this <laughs> later tonight. Um, if you know what I mean, when I'm like sitting down watching TV, removing stuff, great way to kill time and not get bored. So the walking foot. I mentioned it a little bit when I was showing you how to sew down the ruffles. So this is what it looks like. It looks a little goofy, yes. Every single sewing machine company has their own uh, walking foot design. They all look generally like this, I'm not gonna lie. They all look like this. Um, of course, they have the different branding and everything. So if you are new to sewing, like I mentioned, if even if you're not new to sewing and you have a machine that maybe just doesn't do well with thicker fabrics or a lot of thick, like the fabric is making it thick. I would still recommend getting a walking foot. I have had one of these now for probably a year, year and a half. And when I first got it, it was like a miracle. Like I was like, why have I never bought one of these before? They just make sewing uh, fabric so much easier, especially if you're new to sewing. These are a game changer. You're gonna have a lot easier time working with slippery fabrics, working with bulky fabrics. It's gonna really help you to keep your fabric even and under the machine. And so I really, really, really do recommend getting a walking foot. So now that we have the overskirt done, I always hem the bottom skirt last, so I'm gonna wait to the very end of this video to hem it. If you are one of those people who just like to hem it and get it out of the way, uh, you can check out my timestamps below that I mentioned in the beginning of this video, and you can skip ahead and skip back, skip to whatever part of the video you need, whatever part of the video you are at. So that is why I put them down there, because my sewing videos, they are long, guys, and I know that. So, let's get to attaching this to the um, underskirt and then we will start the top. All right, so what we are gonna do now is we are going to attach the skirt to the underskirt. So the first part of this is we're going to be working with the back. Because it's cut down here, we can easily attach it to the back of this. So we want the back to line up perfectly just like it does on this one. So we're going to be separating, make sure that these are separate and these are open. And you're going to just baste this outer one to this one, just like this. And then we will put on over a little cap on it. And we will be sewing this part together as well. So for this part, you're gonna line it up just like you did on the other one line it up over the seams and then we're going to press it down just like we did on the other uh, just like we did here except that this will be over it and we're going to press it down and stitch down Scotty I gotta use the ironing board baby you can get off all right so I'm going to show you right here so this is the slit where I'll be putting the buttons on this so this is the outer fabric. You can see this is where we did 
the French seam and this is where we cut it so that it's open and this is the other one where we uh, pressed it to one side and have this. So now we're going to take it and we're going to line it up right in the opening right here and we're going to pin it down here so that it will stay right here because this is where we want it to line up. Once you have this pin down, we will be adjusting these pins momentarily, but for now, I will just leave them there. So we're gonna make sure this lines up all the way to the top. And we're going to pin it down here. And I had done this to keep my um, thread from falling out because I don't want it to fall out and I lose my ruching here. I didn't do this on camera. It's the same uh, procedure I did for the ruffles. This is just on the waistband since my outer fabric was just a little bit bigger than my um, waist. I wanted it to be just a little gathered. So I went ahead and I did that. So this side will be a little bit differently, done a little differently. So you will want to line it up just like you did on the other side. But we are going to uh, fold it in on that already, the line we already made with the iron. We're going to fold it in. If it helps, you can go ahead and you can pin the fabric down like this because it'll keep it in place while you're folding it. And then you're going to fold it on the ironing seam and you're going to go ahead and take your iron you're going to press it down. Now do be careful if you do not have glass tip pins, you cannot iron over them. It could melt the pin, it could get all over your fabric. So if you do not have glass tip pins, please do not iron over your pin tops. I do have glass tip pins that I am using right now, so I can iron over, me over top them. When you get down to the point right here you're going to want to make sure that it's pulled out and this is where you're going to probably want to take out these pins that you put in here for stability um, so you can actually get in there a little bit better but you're going to want to make sure that it's lined up and that it's folding right where it joins so you don't want the fold to be like over top like that you want it to be exactly where the point is so when you close it up you won't so once that is done and you have it all pinned, when you fold it like this, it should lay perfectly flat just like this. And then on this side, you'll want to do the same. Make sure that it's lined up. All right, so the finished product should look like this. So again, it's going to look a little like a square. And so if you close it like this, this is where your buttonholes will be. And then your buttons will be on this side. And I went ahead and I just basted the two skirts together right at the waist. And we're ready to start the top. Alright, so we're going to start construction on the... So the most important thing that we're going to do first is we're going to take our pattern piece that we have and created. And we're going to line it up just like this and then we're just going to mark where I have the gathers. Oh no, it's broken. That's so sad. So mark. And I think I'm going to extend the gathers a little bit to like right here. So I'm going to mark it on with a pin that I moved the gathers on my pattern. And then we're going to scoot this over and we're going to mark it on this one as well. All right, so for the lining, we're going to be darting the um, deficit of whatever is left of this. So you're gonna have to get out your handy dandy ruler, measuring tape, measure across this, and then measure across this, and whatever amount is uh, left when you subtract those two numbers is how big your dart needs to be. So that's four inches that we need to subtract off of this. So how we're going to do that, going to take your tape measure, take your chalk, 
draw a little line down right down from the point then it's an even number so we're going to line it up right on the two mark there and mark there and then you're just going to fold it in half match up on the blue dots match it up on the point and then sew directly to your point off your fabric and then tie it at the end all right so once you have your dart done just line it up make sure that everything fits everything's good nothing's out of place or where it shouldn't be if everything looks good you're going to take your dart and you're going to uh, press it to one side and then take your scissors right here snip right along here do not snip through your seam snip as close as you can get to the seam and then cut the dart open and then press it again So your dart should look something like this. It'll have the point pressed to the side and then the rest of your dart will be pressed open. Okay, and for the straps, you're going to need a long strip of fabric. I am doing thin straps so that you will need, um, if you're doing thicker straps, you can use a paper clip, not a paper clip, you can use a safety pin, but if you're doing thin straps, you'll need a bobby pin. And what you're gonna do, you're going to sew right sides together so that your seam allowance fourth of an inch and then you will take your bobby pin take a little slit stick your bobby pin in and then put it right side out once you have your strap sewn you're going to be taking your iron and you're going to lay it flat and sew and press the uh, seam open make sure the seam is falling right in the back of the uh, strap. So you shouldn't see the seam when you flip it to this other side. All right, once you get it all pressed, you are going to cut off the extra seam allowance. You wanna try and cut as much of this extra seam allowance off as possible, but do not get too close to your seam. You don't want it to fall out. All right, once it is all trimmed down, it should look something like this. Your seam allowance should now be smaller than your strap. So you're going to go to one end of the strap and you're going to snip it a little bit in. Take your bobby pin and insert it in through the little snip you made. And now you can turn the straps right side in all right and then you can go ahead and press your seam again it should be a lot easier to press since you already pressed it, it should want to naturally just fall right back into that place all right once you have the strap done you can start construction of the cup so you're going to put right sides together your dart and the back side of your fabric should be facing out you're gonna take your strap. You're gonna take your strap and you're going to insert it in like this on your point. So you want it as centered as possible on your point and then pin down. You can pin down all the other areas as well. Once you have them all pinned down, go ahead and sew at your seam allowance all the way around. Do not close up the bottom. You don't need to close it up. You're going to be putting it in a waistband. Once you have that sewn around, you're going to want to take your scissors and you're going to snip around the edge. Do not snip through your seam, but just snip around the edge. This will make sure that your curve is nice and curvy and not wonky looking. Once you have that all snipped, go ahead and pull the strap. It'll come right side in, out. 
and the strap will automatically make it square off so you don't have to worry about squaring it off yourself. Once you do that, make sure all your seams is laying flat. Kind of pinch them between your fingers to get them to come out. Then iron them down and then top stitch around. All right, so to start the waistband, what we're gonna do is we're going to sew on the point that we constructed. So you are going to put right sides together and you're going to just sew at your seam allowance and reverse it back and we will top stitch all of this later so you don't have to worry about doing that now but you do want to press it down. So once you have it sewn you're going to take your scissors and you're going to cut right at that point to where you stopped and press it down. All right, so we are going to connect the top to the belt. So what you're gonna to need to do is you're going to need to pin it down. I'm gonna do it on my dress form. Um, you might do it on the floor or in a mirror on yourself. However, whatever works for you. You're going to take your chalk and you're just going to mark where it will be laid. And it's okay that it's on the right side because it's gonna be in where your seam allowance is so you no one's going to see it. And then you also, I would suggest marking right where you need to insert in the cups. Once you have that all chalked down, you are ready to take it off of your dress form, the floor, wherever you have it, and you can baste your cups to the outer lining. All right, so we are going to attach the cups to the waistband. So how you're going to do that, you're going to line them up. Of course, you're going to do right sides together. Always do right sides together unless you're doing a French or a jean seam, which if you don't know what that is, I will put a link in the description for you to go check out those YouTube videos on what those seams are. But you want to Make sure that your cups here are facing down. This is the bottom because when you fold it out, you're gonna fold it up like this. So make sure they're facing down. And you also wanna make sure, you know those little chalk marks I made? How far in these need to go in, the little chalk marks? Make sure you have seam allowance. So make sure you measure your seam allowance here and shrink that mark so it lines up with your seam allowance. Once you get it all done, you're gonna sew all the way across. Take it out like this, Woo! spread out one side, uh, press it to one side, put it all the way down like so, and then press it down. Be careful when you're pressing your little cups here because if they're gathered like mine, it might look a little funny if they're pressed down. So make sure you're pressing your waistband and not your cups. If your cups are not gathered, by all means, press your cups. We have it all sewn, so like I said, you're gonna push it to one side. It doesn't matter which side. I would suggest doing it towards the lining. It would just make it a little easier. You're gonna iron it to one side, and this just makes it easier uh, on you for when you flip it right side in. And again, try not to iron your cups as much as possible because you don't want to create a weird fold on your ruffles. And then just fold this down. All right. Once it is all pressed, you are ready to press the lining. So what I mean, we are gonna press the seam allowance. So I'm gonna move this up a little bit. We're gonna grab my handy dandy little ruler. We're going to mark the seam allowance. Once it's marked, you're going to fold it inwards like you're going to sew it or like the seam allowance would be sewn in and press it down. And we are doing this because we are going to use the stitch in the ditch method, which means we will attach this part to our dress and then uh, press it upwards and then stitch right in the, along the edge of it where it, we sewed it to stitch this part down. 
So let's connect our belt to our skirt and then we can hem our skirt and fix the length of our ties and we'll all be done. So I brought the skirt over so we can start attaching it. So you wanna do right sides together so your top is gonna to be facing down. And you're going to slide your skirt on over top. Line up your seams. So this is not sewn, so remember you have seam allowance here. So you're gonna hang it off the end and if you wanted to, you could go ahead and fold your seam allowance down and stitch it across, all the way across. Or you could do that after you sew your belt down. Whichever way works, it's fine. Why can't I ever find my pin cushion when I need it? I always like to put my pins in vertically if I can. It just makes things easier for me, makes them easier to take out. If you need to sew over them, you can. So I recommend putting in your pins in vertically. Remember, do not sew your lining in yet. We will be doing that a little later. So make sure when you are sewing this, you don't sew your lining into it. And once you've got that pin, go ahead and sew at your seam allowance all the way around. So once you are done sewing over it, if you did sew over the triangle part, you will want to release that. I just, I like to sew over it because it, it it doesn't, it helps to keep my sewing even, you know what I mean? So once that's done and you've opened it up, you're going to flip it around. Make sure the little triangle part is out. Now you will have another line here to take out if you had a gather stitch in your um, skirt. That is okay. Make sure you shove all those fabrics in there. Make sure everything looks good. So once you've released the triangle part, make sure everything's lined up how you want it to look. Everything's tucked in where it needs to be tucked in. Nothing's showing that shouldn't be showing. And pin it down. All right, once that is pinned down, you can flip it to the other side. Once you flipped it to the other side, you're going to take your lining and you're gonna line it up right below or right above where your stitch line is. At this point, if you have not closed up your waistband, you will want to close it up because we will be putting buttons on this and of course you will need to close up your waistband. If it makes it easier, you can also turn it inside out. If you are struggling to do this while it's right side out, Make sure everything looks A-OK -okay on the other side as well. Once you've had it all pinned, you can sew right at the, you can sew right, right at the edge of the white fabric, or you can do stitch in the ditch and stitch right on the end without actually going onto the waistband. All right, so I'm just gonna show you real quick how I did this. So I ended up doing the stitch in the ditch method, sewing right in the ditch of the belt. And then I did not sew over the point here. If you want to sew over the point, if you're okay with how that looks, go ahead, you can. However, I wanted it to be a little free moving, so I hand stitched it down in the ditch right here. So all I need to do is take out this seam right here and then hem it and hem the bottom skirt. So yeah. And then of course I need to finish these right here, which we will do after we hem the dress. So let's get to that. So you're gonna find the bottom of your skirt and you're gonna take your little bias tape strip here leave a little at the end so you can um, connect it of course and finish it off leave a little tail so you're just going to lay it down and pin all the way around your the bottom of your skirt ah. sorry you want to do make sure that when you do this you also are laying down the side that is not surged all right, once you get to the end, you're going to take the fabric here, 
you're gonna roll it underneath actually you're gonna roll it on top sorry do the same with this fabric roll it on top cut off the extra and then pin it down just like that all right now go ahead and add your seam allowance so all the way around and then we will start the last step all right once you have that done go ahead and just like we've done with the other you're going to take your iron and you're going to press you're going to press this one up so take it, press it up. Once you've done pressing it up, take this and press it like this because we're going to sew right along here to close it up and to finish the seam. So I do want to interrupt real quick and say that a nice way, easy way to kind of help you if you're just starting out and the first time you've ever done this is you can actually snip just a little bit around here just so it's a little easier to move it you don't actually need to do that for this technique just because of the the bias tape that we're using but if you've never done this before and you want to you can do that so i'm just going to go ahead i'm going to finish pressing my bias tape upwards and then we're going to stitch her down all right literally the easiest prettiest hem maybe ever on the planet it just always looks so beautiful thread and just so clean and neat so now the last thing we need to do is put the buttons on the back all right so the last step is to put on your buttons so these buttons are looks are, i'm so excited because these buttons are gonna be so cute let me zoom in real quick all right, so what you're going to need to do now is, of course, you're going to measure where you want your button holes. All right, so you're going to need a ruler and a piece of chalk. So what we're just going to do, we're going to measure how long it is. So my gap is eight and a half. So what I want to do is I'm going to divide eight and a half by six because I have six buttons so we're gonna take my little handy dandy calculator and we're gonna do six oops we're gonna oops oops we're gonna do what was it 8.5 divided by six so about an inch about an inch and a half in between each one so we're gonna do an inch So I want my top button a half an inch from the top. So we're gonna mark that, and then we're gonna do an inch. We're gonna do an inch and a quarter all the way down. Inch and a quarter. Inch and a quarter. Inch and a quarter. One, two, three, four, five, six. Mm -hmm. All right, perfect. Mm -hmm. All right, so what we're going to do before we put on and sew on our buttons, we are, by the way, these are like the cutest buttons ever. Not my original plan. I was originally going to use cover buttons, but I could not find my little cover button machine. So I went and bought these buttons, but look how adorable they are. They're like this pink metallic. So cute. And I think they'll go super cute with my dress. So we're going to put on the buttonholes first. So we are going to get out our buttonhole foot and I will show you how to use your buttonhole foot and what it looks like. Okay, this is what a button foot looks like. I know it looks super goofy, but I promise you it's way better than doing a buttonhole by hand. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna slide open the little uh, button holder right here and put in your button. This is gonna tell you how big your buttonhole needs to be. 
So then there's a black lever, and let me uh, angle this so you can see it better. All right, and there's a black lever right in the back. You can see where my finger is, it's right here. There's always gonna be a lever here on your sewing machine and it will release your foot. Some uh, sewing machine feet, they do have you unscrew it, but most of the time they're little press-ins. So then all you do is you put your foot down and then voila. So you also need to remember to put down your buttonhole lever. So there's a little lever in the back right here. It's gonna look like this most of the time. And it goes in between the notches. So the front notch and the back notch you created, make sure you put it in between there, otherwise the buttonhole foot won't go. All right, so I did a little practice one so I could show you what the buttonhole looks like that I'm using. Let's see if I can focus it, there it goes. Okay, so this is the buttonhole that I will be using. It's just a standard, normal buttonhole. My machine starts from the bottom. Some machines start from the top, but mine starts from the bottom and goes up. So before you do your buttonhole, make sure you know which direction your machine is going to go, whether it's gonna go from the down up or the up down, because otherwise you might ruin your project or it might just take a really long time to get this stitch out. I'm going to flip my garment around so that I can start from the notches. So I always put the notch right in the middle of the foot here. So my notch is not in the middle right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna grab my chalk again. So we're gonna take a measuring tool and I wanna, let's see, I wanna do my buttonhole I want it right in the center here. So it's about half of, so it's like this and then half of this. So I'm going to take my handy dandy little chalk and then each one of my notches here. And I eat one, each one of my notches, we're going to mark where I need to put it in the middle of my foot. And if you're using chalk, it's probably the best way to go for this because you can easily remove it. If you use um, invisible, we're not invisible, disappearing ink pens, that'll work as well. But you wanna make sure that you can remove the marks easily. We're gonna slide it into place. Make sure you can see what you're doing on the other side. Make sure you can see the blue mark. So I always recommend if you're, whenever you're doing buttonholes like this, I always recommend to just tap the foot to let the needle go down so you can see where exactly the placement is. And if you like the placement, um, take out your, uh, if you like the play placement, of course, just keep going, but if you don't, Take your fabric out, grab a scrap piece of fabric, and let it finish because you cannot restart a buttonhole. Once you start that presser foot, the buttonhole's going to finish no matter what. So if you were like halfway between a buttonhole and you stopped, pulled your fabric out, and then wanted to restart, it won't restart. It'll just start from where it left off. So make sure you always check and you're very sure of where you want your buttonholes. cut off the extra threads and I will show you how to open up your buttonhole. All right, so the easiest, and I mean the easiest way to rip open a buttonhole is to take a pin, one of your pins, and you're gonna insert it right at the end of your buttonhole, just like this, how I have these two. And you're gonna take your handy dandy little seam ripper and you're going to place it at the opposite end. Uh, poke through your fabric and tear it up, just like that. 
So I'll show you again. Show you again your pin. Insert seam ripper. Remember to try and only cut in between the buttonhole. Pull up. When you get to the end, your pin is going to stop you from going any further. So no risk of ruining your buttonhole. All right, to attach your buttons, you will need, of course, your hand sewing needles and thread. So this is wax coated thread. Highly recommend getting some guys. I got this from wawalk.com. I will put it in the description for you to find it. Um, but it's wax coated so it doesn't tangle, which is really, really nice if you're, you know, sewing. So let's get attaching this button. And this is really strong thread as well, guys. Let me see if I can get the camera to focus in. Come on. There it goes. This is really strong thread as well, guys, so you don't really need to double it up if you don't want to. I always double up my thread when I'm sewing. Uh, all right, and I always double up my thread just because I'm paranoid that it's going to fall apart, even though I know it's probably not going to. So as you can see here, I already sewn on a couple of the buttons, but I'm gonna show you how to sew one on, and I think, and um, these buttons, of course, are ha are this kind of button, so it has the little thing. Let's see if it'll focus. There it goes. Oop. Come on, you can do it. Has one of these little hoops in the back, so you're gonna obviously attach these buttons differently than regular buttons. But I will show you how I attach these buttons. So I put my needle through the little hoop to start, pull it almost all the way through, and then just loop it so the button just kind of wants to hang there. And then I will find where I put my uh, blue marks you can see here. And I'm going to just make a little incision. And I'm trying not to go all, um, I'm trying to just slightly touch the back sides. You really want to try and keep your button stitches right in the same spot. And then I'm just going to go through, pull it nice and tight, and then I'll repeat this a few times. So one, So once I've done that a few, oops. Once I've done that a few times, what you're gonna do now, you're gonna take your needle and you're gonna stick it through all your stitching. Like this, let me see if I can zoom in a little better. So you're gonna stick it through all your threading, pull it, and then you're gonna loop it back and you're gonna do this one, uh, two or three times. cut it off and do the rest of the buttons. Ugh, I'm gonna be a hunchback by the time I'm 30. Anybody else in the sewing community relate? You're always like bent over and I already have like slight scoliosis so I'm just doomed. I need a chiropractor guys. Anybody else need a chiropractor? All right. Alright, so we are all done with the buttons. Let me cut away some of these extra loose threads. Alright, so my dress form is actually just a little bigger than I am. So I don't think I'll be able to close it all the way. So I will take this off the dress form to show you the buttons. Or let me see if I can close the bottom buttons. I might be able to. All right, so these are the buttons that I was able to button up because again, my dress form is actually just a little bit bigger than I am. Um, it used to be my size, but I shrunk a little bit. So instead of the freshman 15, I got the, I don't know, the, the freshman weight loss 13, I don't know. Anyway, or it's, it's 15, isn't it? Never mind. 
so these are the buttons. They look super cute. I'm super happy with them. So let me zoom out so you can see the whole dress and then I will try it on for you guys. All right, and here is the finished dress. Isn't I, guys, I'm not joking. I am so proud. I think this is the best tailored dress I've done at this point. I've really set a standard, guys. I've been really working on my tailoring lately because I really just, I look at things that I'm like, mm, I, I need to do better. So I'm really proud of my tailoring. I'm really happy with how it turned out. I will try it on in a second. So let's do that for you guys. All right, so this is what the finished product looks like. I am so happy with it, guys. I feel, I feel so pretty in this. I think it's so cute. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Make sure you follow my social media. I'll be posting pictures, of course. If you followed along with this video and you made a dress like mine, please tag me in the photos. I want to see your rendition, your interpretation of this design. Please tag me so I can see it. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel for more sewing, fashion design content, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Look how cute it is. Look at the back. Look at the back. All oh, the buttons. Everything is just, oh my God. I'm in love. I'm never gonna take this dress off. <laughs>